might be an option for them to go into that darks here. Or maybe go something a bit more disruptive, like the clockwork on the offlane. Centaur would even work as well. Like, I think most of the offlaners are actually pretty pretty good for the team for Hatters in time. Even something like, like the Phoenix would be pretty good. I'm sorry, I'm just a bit out of it as I was looking at the brackets. Um, unfortunately, I don't have Letney right here right now to pick up a bit of the slack um, as he's busy with some other stuff right now. Um, but both teams taking their time to actually get the picks they want, make sure that they make no mistake during the drafting phase. Uh, Magna's actually being picked up by the team of Hatters in Time. I'm just going to take a look at the rest of my team. So an Omni Knight ban, a very interesting one. Uh, not something I'd expect them to actually be picking up, but they're afraid of uh, the free magic immunities. They're looking to ban something that'll go solo up against the Magnus, I guess. Because I'm expecting the Chaos Knight Disruption and the Witch Doctor to once again go into the aggressive lane. So something I... I say you should be picking up for the side of Walrus Rising is a Beastmaster. Get the Beastmaster, have the little slowing boar, the nice little lockdown with the roar, easy to land a Sunstrike onto that, as well as just having the, slow, the boar slow in a 1v1 matchup against another melee, basically wins you that lane. Then you have an Invoker going up against the Alchemist, as well as the aggressive tri lane going against the Dazzle Gyrocopter and whatever comes out next from Hatters in Time. But we'll have to see what Walrus Rising decide to pick up. Um, either way, it will be solo against a Magnus and should be something that has a pretty good time against him. And they go for the Ember Spirit. So something that does end up, does like it to go 1v1 have a bit of XP, not that easy to gank, especially with the low amount of lockdown on the side of the Hatters in time. And they do end up picking a Shadow Shaman, giving them some extra push as well as the control, uh, and also some nice little burst damage coming out from the Shadow Shaman to deal with the Ember Shield, as they currently don't really have that much to handle that. Um... Yeah, I'm back. Sorry it's, for the absence. It's actually like Reeps was their invoker, their mid player for the last time. So, is is Reeps going mid on the 
Magnus, or are they just switching it up? Um, as rules was their one of their supports, I think. Um, so they're, they're they're really switching up their roles this time. Um, so they're they're not really that committed to their role in the team, but more the heroes they like to play. So for the side of the Radiant, who are now smoked up, we have CDX on the Gyrocopter. We have Shadow playing that Shadow Shaman. Reaps on the Magnus, Floyd on the Dazzle, and Rules on that Alchemist. Yeah, and uh, for the Dire team, we have... Uh, one second, boys. Tima <laughs> Echuria uh, on the Invoker, uh, Spudo on the CK or Chaos Knight, uh, Mark Fasti on the Witch Doctor, Aethi on 8 on the Ember Spirit, and S. Pon Geo on the Disruptor. I, I don't know how to pronounce right their nicknames, so guys, sorry, but uh, for me it sounds like just French cheese. Right, I'm gonna check on uh, the Defiant, see uh, why they're not showing up, because apparently they haven't shown up yet, so I'm gonna have to see if I have one of their players in my Steam. So I can make sure that he knows what the hell is going on. As Out of Milk is still waiting. Uh, the boys are making a Imba strat against them probably. It's calling Volvo. Volvo, tell us what to pick. Almighty. And uh, yeah, uh, man meanwhile guys, Invoker is heading to the safe lane and uh, healer and uh, wax so uh, actually it can be or a uh, wax exert in walkers uh, with one point in cold snap uh, into alacrity and maybe sunstrike or meteor or a uh, cold snap uh, <coughs> tornado emp in walker and uh, middle is uh, alchemist with the same spirit and actually Alchemist will have a uh, easy time against uh, the Ember. First of all, uh, they are even in armor. Alchemist's uh, acid spray is physical damage, so the uh, flame guard doesn't block it. And according to the gain of gold, uh, Alchemist will go ahead. Uh, and uh, of course, a aggressive tri lane with the uh, CK disruptor and uh, witch doctor versus a gyro shadow shaman and dazzle. And uh, this is actually the most interesting part uh, of the game by now, because uh, either way, uh, it can go. So if if uh, CK uh, catches someone out, uh, it's a fast kill. You can uh, like. Uh, Follow up with the cask right now, yeah, and you just block with yeah, the, the bounce goes kinetic through field and the stun. Yeah, that's here you go. That's basically it. It's the same thing they did last game, putting the pressure onto that off onto that safe lane, yeah. making sure that they have the stun, they have the lockdown. No AA this time, but they do have that witch doctor with the bouncing cask. And yeah, uh, mid lane alchemist already made two mistakes. First of all, he didn't uh, go two levels first on third level into acid spray, which uh, like gets off amber from the lane, and he didn't skill a stun. He maxed uh, the Grievous greed, and uh, he should know that if you uh, as further you max out Grievous greed, you get less bonus from the bounty rune. So, yeah, m maybe he has some sick threat, but uh, as I see, he's not Wait, that experienced. What do you mean you get less bonus from the bounty room? Uh, well, according, uh, like on the first level of Grievous Grid, you get the maxed from the bounty room. And uh, as far as you scale it, you get less from the bounty room. I may be wrong. I'm uh, not as, as far as I know, you get five times the, the, the bounty rune. Like right, in the, if you skill one time uh, the no, grid. Uh, as far as I know, it's on all levels, because I'm not seeing it uh, scaling anywhere on the skill. Hmm. Well, uh, I, think I could be wrong, but uh, someone told me that 
uh, like it's like that. I'm not telling that it's true or something. Yeah, no, it's it's it, you basically get 500 at all times. Mm -hmm. But still, you need the, the stun. Yeah, he's, he's taking quite a bit of damage. He's running in, uh, like he's throwing out the acid spray, but it's not getting rid of the flame guard as it does physical damage. Yeah, so and the uh, flame guard will keep doing quite a bit. The unstable concoction is also physical damage. So. Yeah. Uh, this Ember Spirit will actually get a lot of damage from the two combination of two spells. Right, so Shadow Shaman goes to that rune, will end up paying for his life, I think, as... There you have Ooh, it, one nice. more right-click should do it. Running uphill, misses it. No! The heals that came out from the Witch Doctor keep the Ember Spirit alive. Spray comes down, which shouldn't be able to tick it as the heal from the Witch Doctor is just a bit too potent. Witch Doctor is just a lifesaver. And yeah, uh, I want to see the net worth. And actually, Ember Spirit is ahead of Alchemist. And now he will TP on base and get full HP. Yeah, it'll all come down to, to the side lanes. As long as the Ember isn't forced to leave this lane and just keep harassing... Yeah, and bottom, uh, the people picked off the CK. Nice. That's that's something they need because, like I said, if the Ember Spirit can stay in the lane and not be too bothered with the alchemist uh, with the other lanes, then he can keep the alchemist in check. Otherwise, the alchemist will eventually still come back and get him. Basically, he's now body blocking, not right clicking the uh, the alchemist. Oh, nice! That aggressive. And ulti, uh, yeah, but the heal comes in from the alchemist ulti. And he should stay alive for this pretty easily. Ember actually runs into the tower, takes another tower hit, has to use all of his remnants. Uh, Dav David hit. Copperfield, you know, some tricks. How I can, I can blink, watch, watch, Alchemist. <laughs> I can put three remnants on mid and blink, blink, blink. So the Hatters in Time have now reclaimed their, uh, their safe lane, basically. With the, the Witch Doctor having to babysit the Ember Spirit from time to time. Shadow Shaman wanted to go for the rune. They don't have vision of that area. At least not the part where uh, Ember as well as Witch Doctor were standing. So as soon as he came in, he was uh, caught out. Mm, an uh, incorrect movement by this Shaman. Yeah, and about the top lane. Uh, actually, uh, Invoker is doing really good. Like, he's already leading in CS, and uh, as further goes, like, it's hard to stay a Magnus versus an Invoker, a Quaswax Invoker, because even if you skewer, you, you can disrupt it with the Tornado. So right, so, with that max level, I think he had three levels or four levels in Grievous Greed, he used a Bounty Room, and I only saw him gain 310 gold, which is a bit weird. So, uh, uh, I was right, actually, yes? Uh, apparent, it looks like it. We'll, we'll have to see next time he picks one up. It doesn't show anywhere on the skills, so it's it's a bit weird to have that hidden in the... Uh, in, in the actual files. Um, I'll, I'll have to check next time with the net worth as soon as he picks up another one and uses it to see how much he actually gains, but in-game it, sh it showed a plus 310. Which is a bit weird. So the rotation towards mid from the Magnus. Sees the Ember Spirit, pushes him back. Well, 300 gold. No, 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 man, you were right. Because uh, 300 gold is the five time uh, normal gold. Uh, but uh, the, the difference is uh, where I was wrong that the first starting bounty rune gives X2 uh, from the next bounty rune. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the first one is worth double. Yeah. That that was it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's still the same. So For some reason, I keep thinking that every bounty rune gives about like gives a bunch of money. And yeah, Magnus is in trouble. Gets a three second stun. Chaos Knight actually pulls in Ooh, the creeps because nice. he wanted to bounce to go out. Ends up running back. He takes an invoker hit. The Shackle comes out with the Tornado EMP. One more right click. Finish off the Shadow Shaman. Four people now in this bot lane should be able to take this tower pretty easily. But the Alchemist is mid and he's uh, gaining him some money. He's going for what looks to be a... Well, is it, maybe he's like... Is it a uh, Vanguard? No, no, it's a super build, you know, super... Uh, 
from uh, Witcher Gaming does like this on Alchemist. He just gets the Vitality Booster for the HP in further going to Heart of Tarask. He just okay. leaves it, you know, for the HP because it's very cost effective. I mean, eventually that point booster, I'm just looking to see what I'll use it for. I mean, just getting a casual point booster to get some, some HP. Well, it's for 1,250 HP and you can go into heart after. So. Yeah, but you can go into heart, but you can also use it to go into that Octarine Corn eventually. Like, it's also mm. used for that. Yeah, and oh, if you yeah, go yeah, for I forgot about it. Nice little skewer, just misses everyone, gets stunned up, ult comes out, Reality Rift will finish him off. Shadow Shaman TP'd in. Actually got glimpsed back, saving him from uh, certain death as he was also caught into uh, the kinetic field and the EMP. So kind of a bit of a misplay there by the Disruptor using both skills and basically saving the Shadow Shaman that way. But another tower is claimed. Gyrocopter not having the time of his life. But has I, I don't understand time. Okay, this moment that... Uh, so your alchemist, you're getting max gravel grid. Okay, you got mid. For your max gravel grid, you get HP items so you don't die. But you have a Magnus, a uh, Gyro, uh, uh, and you can fight. Actually, if you would have that stun into the RP and so on. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like. I, if I was him, I would also just go for the uh, the quick medallion. Uh, and just get the stun and go for that way. Like yeah. minus 10 armor on someone when you throw the stun, a few right clicks, does quite a bit of damage. Man, on as Ember well as you Spirit. being able to fight early with stuff like the gyrocopter, who only has a 55 second cooldown on his ultimate, while having the, the bigger the bigger fighting cooldowns uh, in the Magnus RP, but also having the control of the Shadow Shaman. Yeah, he and should have been able to take this. The Magnus could learn one time, not two times skewer, but one time empower for the alchemist. And uh, yeah, it would be definitely easier to fight, you know, to initiate and uh, actually throughout the game, even to farm with the alchemist with the maxed Grivel's Greed. You don't have the damage, boys. Now you have. He's gonna have to keep running. Wishok will try and body block it up, but wasn't able to. Stun flies out, three seconds. They're stacking Here all their cooldowns, but the MP should be able to finish him off. And, yeah, well, well mm, maybe the boys are tired, but they get cut off too much. Oh, nice tornado. Glimpse back, Magnus Re has reality. a grave, but also has a, an urn, which uh, caused him to tick down. So, yeah, uh, is comeback uh, real? I think this time, definitely not. Maybe if last time with the Spectre SF, maybe there was a tiny bit of hope. This time I don't see them coming back to this game. Invoker almost, well not almost, okay boys, not almost, but he's near his uh, silence. Uh, and uh, yeah, SK is feeling really decent, uh, Ember is feeling really decent with the drums and stick. A graded stick maybe goes into travel boots, and uh, the main thing the two supports are mm, really good at money. And yeah, smoke from the radiant team. Uh, okay, guys, but you need stuns, and you have only a hex from Shadow Shaman and the net. Yeah, not having any stuns against something as slippery as a Quas Wex Invoker, as or well as the Ember Spirit. Yeah. Like, they have a slow, they have some lockdown, but all the lockdown is used. Charge comes in, has the RP, but he gets EMP'd, doesn't have anything, as the Invoker was just in time with this tornado. One going down, two going down, three going down, three to one now, but the Alchemist should not be long for this world. As well as the Dazzle, trying to run, there's one Ember Spirit left, has and to throw it out, he gets goes out. Nice. Gets the cold snap and then the reality rift drags him back in. 
A five for one exchange. And uh, that was like game. <laughs> well, uh, maybe I'm too negative, but uh, you, you, when you have an alchemist, a gyro, uh, you need to farm and split push, not to go in smoked without a stun. Onto uh, a team that leads uh, like 17 kills. Well, not 17 at that moment, maybe 15. Maybe, maybe even less, 14, 13, but still. Yeah, travel boots and Ember Spirit. Now he will farm a lot faster. And yeah, another try, another net. Skewer, RP, but no follow up. Nothing, he has nothing yeah, no, left. Now Jarek gives out. his ultimate, and the cooldown goes, but now he's uh, 1 versus 5 and he will die. Alchemist comes waltzing in as well, gets the searing change, the 3 seconds stun to his face. Dazzle throws out the Shallow Grave, gets silenced up. Alchemist shouldn't survive. And there we go, Dazzle goes down as well. Wicked 6th Street now for the CK. Yeah, Actually, well. rushing a Manta? Why not? Eh? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I just can, you know? It's like that. Why not? <laughs> I will have a Manta till before 20th minute, so I will have uh, with the reality rift five guys that hit you. That's pain. I like how Ember plays. He really makes uh, decent decisions, uh, not mentioning the one that he had on mid three different uh, remnants. <laughs> the Hocus Pocus moment, but throughout the game he plays really decent. Right, so judging by uh, the standings so far, with uh, several teams not showing up, um, unfortunately, um, the Defiant weren't able to come in uh, to play against Out of Milk, which basically cost the Out of Milk to now have four wins. Oh, really? Meaning, yeah, they're now four out of four, basically. Um, if Walrus Rising win this one, they'll be at four as well. Oh, I meaning that there is no way for any other team to catch up, which means that to uh, that the teams that are still there in the like they can still play against each other if they like to. They can still use the battle fight chat. But what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, casting uh, the next game Walrus Rising against Out of Milk. If uh, Walrus Rising will be winning as our main finals. Well, it seems so. A dive behind a tier 1 tower turns very, very deadly as the Witch Doctor ulti takes quite a bit of damage. So that's a GG call. That's one game again for Walrus Rising. Yeah, uh, thank you guys for the fast games. Really didn't expect it. L last. If I remember the first time when we commentated, our first game was uh, one hour and plus plus. Yeah, one hour and nine minutes, and that was with, with half an hour of draft. It was a pretty long game. 